Hey guys, uh, by now you have completed Newton's second law lab, at least the uh, data collection part where you ran your toy car with various uh, amounts of washers off the end of a table and calculated the experimental acceleration of your car. And then you also calculated the predicted acceleration, which is what we would have expected to see for the acceleration under perfect conditions. Uh, your data table, you should have by now transferred your information for the data table into either Sheets, uh, Google Sheets, or uh, Microsoft Excel, either one. Uh, either one is a great spreadsheet program and we can use it to uh, create our charts and also we can use it to graph the data, which is the purpose of this video. Um, the reason we create graphs, of course, is because they're a visual way to represent the data we've collected. Um, you know, if you, if you look at the information here that I've transferred into Google Sheets, it's a little hard for us to uh, visualize what's going on. If we put it into graphical format, it's much easier to see visually uh, how the acceleration changed as we change the mass so that visual can, can help us out. So uh, I'm going to start by working, uh, how to, showing you how to graph in Google Sheets. And then a little bit later on in the video, I'm going to show you how to do an Excel. If you're going to do the graph in Excel, if you would please fast forward until you see your screen change to Excel so that you know how to do it there. Uh, and then after I show in Excel, I'm going to talk a little bit about taking your, your graphs and pasting them over into um, your lab report, which uh, is an important part of this whole process, is creating that formal lab report um, for the experiment we're doing. So. Here we go. Uh, you should have your title, your headings for your columns. Uh, your chart should look something like this. Um, you only need to have the mass and that's going to be in kilograms. And then our two data series will be the experimental acceleration and the predicted acceleration. Uh, if you have any other information in your data table, that's fine. We're only going to select the data that's in these three columns. And it works best if they're all right next to each other and the mass comes first. Now, uh, your instructor might have also, also asked you to create another table, data table, with the information for the experimental acceleration. And that's fine if that's in here too, but we're not going to select it whenever we go to graph. So in Sheets, it's really simple. Once you have your data in here, uh, and, and time out for a second, you need to do a quick check on some things. First of all, none of your uh, numbers should have any letters in those boxes. If if Sheets or Excel sees letters in those boxes, it's going to be confused and it's not going to be able to graph the data. So if you accidentally put units with all of your numbers here, you need to take those out. The only place we should put units is in the column heading. And you can see I have those here for all three of my column headings. Also, do a quick peek at your numbers. Do they make sense? For example, if I was looking through here and it went 0 0.035, 0 0.04, 0 0.045, and then it went 0 0.5 uh, instead of 0 0.05, maybe I just forgot to put that 0 0.05 in there and I, I misentered my number. Please check to make sure that none of your numbers are drastically different than the others around them. If they are, then you either made a mistake in your calculations, or likely you made a mistake in your calculations, or you transferred the data incorrectly. So before we go and make this graph, uh, you know, check that just to make sure things look okay. All right, so let's go ahead and graph this. We're gonna select uh, all of the data that we wanna graph. Make sure you don't include any extra columns or extra rows. If you do something like this, it's gonna get confused. So select all this here, and then you're gonna go up to the insert menu and go down to chart. And it's going to automatically create this graph for us, which is really nice, but we do need to make some changes to it. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is this should not be a line graph because this is not continuous data. Uh, this is best suited for a scatter plot, or a scatter plot would be best suited for this. So if we come over here to chart type, you'll see the chart editor is open. Click on the one that looks like a scatter plot. This is going to better represent our information so we can get an average trend line on here instead of a continuous line, which is uh, not, a, not a good representation. Um, you'll, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and make sure we have titling and whatnot on all of our graphs. Now, some teachers will ask you to have a title here. 
Um, technically, whenever we write formal lab reports, uh, we don't include titles, we include captions, which I can show you how to create those later. Uh, so I'm actually going to get rid of the chart title because I want my class uh, to do a caption instead of a title. Uh, but if your teacher asks you to do a title, then you should include that on your graph. Now, we have mass down here for our independent variable, which is good, but we also need to add the uh, our, our acceleration over here for our, for our dependent variable. And since both of these are acceleration, experimental, and predicted, we'll just come up here to the chart title and axes. Over here, we're going to go, this is our vertical axis, our up and down axis. And we're going to go ahead, I can go ahead and add acceleration. And we always want to put the title of the thing that we're graphing on the axis and the units always. That's really important. Um, and so we're going to do little m for meters per second. And it's actually per second per second, which is also second squared, as you can see up on my data table. Um, so you can either do a two here or you can do per seconds again. Per second per second is probably better than just having that two, which uh, honestly, I'm not sure how to superscript. So maybe some of you know how to superscript that, which is great. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and uh, put that here. So that, that puts this on our, our uh, vertical axis here. Uh, and our horizontal axis is labeled. Now, the last thing we need to do with our chart is add a uh, trend line or uh, yeah, trend line here. Now, I, I clicked off of the chart editor. It's gone. So if I need to bring it back up, just click on the chart, come here uh, to the menu and edit chart, and it should come back up. Now, if we go to customize and we go to series, the data series, it's going to allow us down here to add a trend line. And that's just basically like an average line for our data. Now, just a quick thought about data lines. If if we were really perfect at collecting data and we did it exactly the same all the time, all of these dots would fall on our line. So we would get like a perfect average. Um, but because of experimental error, we see that that's not the case. We get some variation in that average. And so that line is just a better representation of all of our data. Um, for our experiment here. And you should notice <clears throat> a gap between our predicted and our experimental acceleration. Later in the lab, you're going to be thinking about why is that gap there? Why is our acceleration actually less than what it should be based on Newton's law? So you should be able to uh, talk about that in your discussion. So that's it for our graph. Sheets makes it super easy to make these. Uh, and the last thing we'd want to do is just cut this and put it into our document uh, and so i'll just show you really quick uh, for my data table i can come here and i can do Control c or right click and cut and i've set up already um, this the basics of the lab which you should have set up in your class and i can do Control v to paste that in here i may need to do a little bit of editing to this but actually it looks okay um, and we'll we'll make things look uh, a little bit nicer as we move forward um, your teacher will probably talk to you about that. And then I want to go ahead and grab my uh, chart as well. So I can come here and control C. And you may be putting all of your data into a Google document and that's fine too. Just do the same thing. Control V and we have our chart and that's what we have. And then of course it doesn't need to be gigantic. Uh, these shouldn't take up a half a page. So we can see them just fine by making them smaller. Uh, both of these data tables and then, of course, you'll want to add your uh, information, your captions underneath these by inserting a text box. OK, so for sheets, uh, that's the end of sheets. Now, if you're graphing in Excel, this part will just show you how to do that. Um, I did talk about a little bit of important information about formatting and stuff in the uh, graphing on Google Sheets. Uh, one of the things that I mentioned is you want to go in and check your numbers and make sure that you transfer them over from your data sheet correctly and that you didn't make a mistake in data entry. There's a lot of numbers, there's a lot of zeros, so just make sure you recorded things um, from your data sheet over to Excel uh, correctly. All right, now when we go to make our graph in Excel, we're going to select all of the data here by clicking and dragging. All right, and then we go up to our insert menu. And on the insert menu, there's a variety of charts that we can add. And we want to use a scatter plot. That's going to best represent our data. 
we should not use a line graph because this is not continuous data over time. Uh, it is actually, you know, experimental data that be is best re represented with a scatter plot. So we're just going to go ahead and pick the first one, the scatter plot. Um, and you'll notice it adds all of our data points for our experimental acceleration and predicted acceleration. Now there's a problem in that there's this really big gap and that doesn't look good for our graph. So the first thing we want to do here is make an adjustment on that. The easiest way to do this is to right click on this axis down here and click format access. There's multiple ways to do this. Um, <clears throat> that's going to bring up oops, this box over here and you'll notice that Excel just decided to put our starting point on the x-axis as zero. Now, I don't really want it to be that because that's why we have this big gap here. I see that if it started at 0 0.03, that would probably be a little easier to visualize here. So we're going to change the minimum of the x-axis to 0 0.03. And that's going to spread things out a little bit and help us to better see the trend. All right, now, as far as the chart goes, um, your teacher may ask you to put a chart title. Technically, whenever we do uh, data, uh, sorry, whenever we write up formal reports um, and lab reports, we don't put titles on charts. We use captions instead. And you'll learn about how to do that in class. But I'm going to go ahead and take this chart title off. If your teacher wants you to have a chart title, then go ahead and give it an appropriate title. All right. We have our key down here. That's important. You'll notice that neither of our axes, our X axis or Y axis, have data labels on them. So we need to come over here. We need to add those. We're going to go to the plus button and we're going to go over here to axis titles and click. Yep. I want to I want titles on both of these and that'll put those in as text boxes. And now we can go ahead and change those. Now, remember, we want to go ahead and include what we're recording on that axis and the units. And so the bottom or the independent variable in this lab was the mass of the car. Right. And that is in kilograms. Really important that you used kilograms. Over here, um, the independent, the dependent variable, come on, was the acceleration of the object. So we're going to put that here. Oops, if I could accelerate, that would help. A C C E L E R A T I O N. And that's in meters per second, per second, per second, or meters per second squared. If you want to add meters per second squared, you just have to superscript that too. And that's a little, a uh, few more extra steps. So, um, but that's, this is all you have to do. Uh, labeling your X and Y axis, pretty easy. Last thing is we need to add trend lines here. And so we want an average line that goes through both of our data series. And uh, I think the easiest way to do this, there's a couple of ways. Um, you can click on the plus here and add the trend line this way. Um, and we'll just do that for both of them. Uh, you can also right click on one of the dots of the data series and add trend line that way. So either way works. Um, and you can see now the key does make this pretty big. So I would probably come down here to the key and change the, the font size of this to be a little bit smaller so it doesn't take up most of our chart. We want this to be the majority. Now that we have that created, um, the next part is to transfer it over to our lab. And if you watch this on the sheets part, you can skip this part. But uh, in order to transfer our data table and our uh, graph, we can just select what we want and control C for copy. Um, I already have a Word document here set up for the different sections you're going to need to have the introduction results and discussion. And so um, all of your data tables, control V, all of your data tables will be in here. Uh, and your charts will be in here as well, or your one chart. We'll come back over here to Excel. We'll grab our table, I'm sorry, our chart, our graph, uh, control C to copy it, come over to Word, control V to paste it. Um, it's going to put it in there. And if these copied over really big, they don't need to take up the whole page. So um, be reasonable with your size. Make sure they're going to be you know, readable, but you don't need it to take up the entire page. So make it look good. That's a really important part of your um, the things you're doing. The last thing you'll do on these, since we don't have titles, is you'll come down and add captions by using text boxes. And like I said, your teacher um, should show you how to do that. And you may also have another data table if your teacher is asking you to include the data table from the experimental acceleration data collection that might be in there too. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.